Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be looking at DevWan 4.0 right after this. It's been a while since DevWan 4.0 came out, and of course, its code name is Chimera. But, I, I mean, I think it was, I, yeah, we'll talk about all that. But some of the things that you might ask, some of the questions you might ask when you're first approaching a list of distributions of Linux that you want to look at or consider is, what is what is this thing? Why do we have this version of Linux? And the second is, what are the features that this particular version of Dev1 offers you? So that's what we're going to look at today. And we're, first thing is, what is Dev1? Dev1 4.0 was released in October of 2021. And uh, it came about, Dev1 came about in 2014 as a result of Debian uh, standardizing on System D as their init system manager. And that, that was a long <laughs> technical and publicized debate. Uh, before that happened, but some of the developers felt that you know that was a poor choice, and they picked up and moved over and formed a fork of Debian called Dev1. So Dev1 basically sticks to the well-known init system, System V init or System 5 init, which is similar in function to the way the original Unix System 5 init manager worked. So and it was always it was the staple under Linux for the longest time. So. Uh, what is Dev1? What's the name mean? What is this? It's kind of a funny name. What does it mean? So it comes from two parts. One is Debian, and the second is VUA, which is an abbreviation for Veteran Unix Admins. And so you put them together and you get Dev1. That's where it comes from. Uh, so what's wrong with System D? I am not going to get into it here. I mean, it's a long story, and there's a lot of objections, and both technical and political. Uh, this, you know, whether or not those technical and political objections are valid today, I would say, I mean, I grew up with the Unix mantra, and that was one of the big objections. The Unix mantra. The Unix mantra is write a program well and only do one thing. And when you want to extend that application's functionality, you pair it using either pipes and filters onto another application to add the additional functionality that you are desiring. Well, System D doesn't follow that. Uh, they, you know, they, they don't follow that at all. So, and that was one of the big objections to it. There was others, but that was the big one. So yeah, I'm I'm not going to dredge up all the all the stuff here. It's just um, that has it's it's over. It's done. I mean that decision was made by Debian back in 2014, and that was seven years ago. So uh, as far as what's new in Dev1 4.0, the first thing you're going to find, just like its its older brother Debian 11, it boots up very quickly, and. There's a number of reasons for that. Uh, one is they have a, they have rewritten the boot process, and two, uh, because of the Sys5 uh, init is more efficient today than it was originally. So, however, if if you don't want System5 init, you can choose OpenR or run it. Uh, just remember that System5 init does bring up things sequentially. Now, is that a bad thing? Uh, Maybe and maybe not, because there are sometimes an order that you want to keep when you're launching applications uh, and services. So you have dependencies like, for example, if I'm launching an HTTP server, I might want my network and my DNS services up first. So, yeah, um, Dev1 is based on Debian 11 Bullseye. And it's one of the few distros that still supports a 32-bit architecture or an i386 architecture, in addition to, of course, an x86-64. But there's also support for ARM. There's ARM64, and there are 32-bit architectures for ARM, such as ARMEL and ARMHF, that are supported as well. Um, PowerPC 64-bit is also supported as 64EL. So if you have those kinds of architectures in your space, then you might consider Dev1, one of the ISOs for Dev1 that supports the architecture that you need. So the other thing about uh, the difference between Debian and Dev1 is Debian is GNOME-based, 
whereas DevOne is XFCE based. So your default your default uh, display manager by default is XFCE. But it also you can also install Mate 1.24, Cinnamon 4.8, KDE Plasma 5.20. LXQT, now I don't have a version number for that. It wasn't in the release notes. And also XFCE 4.16. So maybe we can find a version number for LXQT today when we're going through the package list, but we'll see. So there's a couple of new things in Dev1 4.0, of course, the boot process, which we talked about, uh, and the new display manager, which... I think um, and then we also have additional desktop theming that uh, that is available as well. So if you're wondering what's going to come next, well, the only thing I know for sure is in Dev1 5, it'll be called data. Load. Well, there's some of the other things that are new. Well, XM was upgraded to 4.94. Uh, there is... Uh, Podman on Debian that's also available on Dev1, but because of the differences in the way the system services are handled, there is a reconfiguration script that needs to be run on Dev1 in order for Podman to function correctly. So uh, it is actually just nothing more than a package install. And if you, I'll put a link for the release notes where you can find the information if you're interested in doing that. Uh, WICD was removed from Debian, and so it also does not exist in Dev1. So if you're looking for alternatives from WICD, you can look at Conan, Conan for LXDE, Network Manager for XFCE, Mate, Cinnamon, and KDE. Uh, there's also if up down, which is the system default if you install from the uh, live CD or the installer. So there's a couple of issues. One of the one of them is AMD CPUs require a firmware and graphics package from the non-free repository. The symptom of this is if you're ri running on Ryzen or you're running a Ryzen APU, that when you launch uh, Dev1 for the first time after the install, the screen will go black. So yeah, and that will indicate that you're missing that particular firmware package. So. Again, in the release notes, there is ways to mitigate that problem, as well as there are some other issues, such as if you're upgrading from an older version of XFCE to Dev1 4.0, that I don't think all of the uh, icons come over, and there are fixes to deal with that, too. So... Dev1 can be installed either from an ISO, and that would allow you to then install it. Uh, you put it on a stick and install it to hardware, or you could install it on a VM. There's also a live CD, which is available under the ISO that allows you to experiment and play around with it uh, before you decide to install it. And there are live CDs both for 32-bit and 64-bit Intel AMD architecture. So there are other specialist ISOs, which we talked about, support ARM, ARM64, uh, and PowerPC as well. And of course, there are Docker images, which uh, Podman is compatible. Excuse me. Docker is compatible with Docker. There are also scripts that allow you to migrate from, well, I shouldn't say scripts. There's actually a procedure allows you to migrate from Debian 3 to Debian, uh, excuse me, Dev1 3.0 to Dev1 4.0. Uh, there's also instructions for migrating Debian 11 to Dev1 4.0, and that is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to migrate a Debian 11 release over to Dev1 4.0. So let me go get set up, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got a, I've got a couple of things set up here. First of all, I have... A, uh, a SSH connection to my virtual machine on from my local box. Uh, and I also have the virtual machine uh, console to bring up so that we can see uh, what changes actually occur after we perform this update. So let's go ahead and launch this. As you can see, the virtual machine is Debian. This is just a stock Debian, uh, Debian release. And I'm going to make sure that it is up to date before we get started. Because you'll, you'll definitely want all the packages up to date on this before you get started with it. So the reason I'm using this over here is because I 
I want to be able to uh, copy and paste from the website. So uh, you can follow along with me. The um, I'll put a link below for you uh, to find on their web pages the information that you need in order to start this upgrade process. So the first thing that we need to do is to go update the uh, APT sources list. In fact, I'm just going to Okay, so I, I want to comment out all this stuff. Now, I could just update, but it's easier to just do this. So, the first thing I want to do here is... Copy in these things. So, this will change the location of the packages to deb, deb1.org.merged. Chimera main instead of bullseye main off of the Debian because Dev1 does maintain its own repo. So you'll notice that I do not have either the non free or the free repositories. So, yeah. So, all right. So we've got that. The next step will be to do a, we need to do an update as in, for an insecure repository. So, that allows me to pick up the packages that I need uh, in order to start this. So, in order to start this upgrade. So, we'll do this. Yeah, so this says it couldn't verify the signatures, but yeah, we expected that. And so, the other thing is now we want to be able to install the key ring so that we can actually uh, get the packages installed correctly. So we're going to fix that right now. And we'll do that by doing an apt get install dev1 keyring allow unauthenticated. Be careful when you do this one. APT get, don't do a distribution upgrade, just do a, an update uh, in order to get the packages down. If you do the other one, <laughs> you'll have some problems. So, so now I should be able to do an upgrade. And it's telling me I've got 120 packages. This will take some time. And so we'll let that run and we'll be back. Um, one thing that I will tell you that if you notice that some of the packages are broken, that's okay. Uh, we will fix that before we're done here. So the first thing I need to do after doing this upgrade is I actually need to put out the packages that I need that are unique to Dev1. So we'll want to do that and we'll go ahead and get that started and again there as you can see there's package breaking here so don't worry about that it'll be fine uh, because what we're going to do is we're going to do an F, a forced install and there and that cleared that problem so the next thing we want to do is reboot and you can see it it has switched over to dev uh, dev one But it will only give us a shell at this point. So don't, don't be alarmed at that. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and SSH back in. I may have to, yeah, I, I may have to reconfigure my, my uh, network. Okay. I think I got my network back. And we'll have to... Fix that. There we go. All right, so I'm back in again. So my next step here, um, what I had to, let me just show you what I had to do. So I had to go into network and modify my interfaces the problem is, is these two lines right here were not present. So 
Um, I don't. I don't know. I think they have a script that you can use that does all this on their installer page. So it will take care of this problem, whereas the ins the written instructions do not mention it. So I did an IPA and I got the name of my device and then I just did an auto ENS18, which enables it. And then I did an iFace ENS18 INET DHCP, which makes it go out and get a DHCP address, which for my purposes today is fine. So let's pick up where we left off here. So I next need to do a full distribution upgrade. Now is the time where you can do this. So let me let me go ahead and get into root because I, I this is gonna yeah. So I want to do an apt get distribution upgrade. And this should fix all of the package breakage that we caused when we did the upgrade initially. So this would straighten out everything. So the next thing we need to do is we need to get rid of system D. So I'm going to do a purge on system D and lib ns system D. All right. It's, let's make sure that it is gone. Yeah, it's gone. All right. So the next thing I'll need to do is to put back in my, um, I need to put in a, a GUI. And so I'm going to do a task XF CE desktop and that'll bring back the default XFCE environment for dev one and I'm gonna I'm gonna purge it off I don't I don't want to just I don't want to just remove the package I want to get rid of any of the config that goes with it and then I want to do an apt get auto clean oops And that should get rid of the last vestiges of my Debian install. And at this point, I'm done. So we can, yeah, we can reboot this again here. Make sure that we get our, yeah, our GUI up again. So. There we go. Now, it's pretty plain Jane, so at this point, you would probably want to apply whatever themes you wanted. If, uh, if you have some questions about this, leave me a comment below in the, uh, in the comments section of the video and let me know what those might be. But uh, like I said, if, if you want to see how to actually do the install from scratch, there's, you can look, look at the Dev1 3.0, or you can look at the install guide notes that are on the website. Hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you all again in the next video, and bye for now.